Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. I like to say it because it's true, another beautiful evening here at Arlena First Assembly of God Church. I want to share just a couple of announcements with you before we get into our Bible devotional this evening. And one of them is, next Wednesday, if you're physically capable of joining us at the church, we're having our annual uh, cookies and Christmas carol sing-along honoring the birth of Jesus Christ. It's a great time of fellowship. The boys and girls are there. There'll be special music, and it's something you just don't want to miss. Next Wednesday, December 14th at 7 o'clock. And then just a few days after that, on Sunday, December the 18th, will be a, uh, a wonderful day for our church. For the boys and girls, adults, there'll be special music. We, uh, I, I hear that Santa and Mrs. Claus will be present. We'll be sharing one of the greatest stories ever told about the greatest one who ever lived and why he came. And the boys and girls just don't want to miss it. Every boy, every girl will receive a, a gift, cookies, and hot chocolate. So you don't want to miss that. We're looking forward to a great day. And then on Christmas Sunday, which happens to be December 25th this year, Christmas is landing right on Christmas Day. And so please make note of this here, that our service is at 10 a.m. Usually we meet at 10.30 a.m., but this Sunday, on Christmas Sunday, we'll be meeting at 10 a.m. So be sure to mark that down. And then the other thing that we are so excited about as we move into the new year, 2023, is we always start our year at the church with 21 days of prayer and fasting. Those dates are January the 8th through the 28th. And we're looking forward to a great, great uh, time of connecting with the Lord we always look at it as it's our foundation for 2023 as a church, as individuals. So we'd love to have you join us. We're looking forward to a 100% participation from all the attendees and members of our Lita First Assembly. Our theme for fasting and prayer, those 21 days of fasting and prayer, is fresh wind, fresh fire. And not only is that our theme, for our 21 days of fasting and prayer, but it is our theme for our church throughout the year 2023. So we're excited about that. hope that you'll come and join us. There'll be some resources on our website on prayer and fasting, so uh, you may want to go on and uh, see some of the resources that are available to you there. Well, for our devotional this evening, as you know, we're pretty much in the heart of Christmas now. You've been hearing probably on the radio or at church that we're in the Advent season. Ad Advent is all about preparing our hearts, basically slowing down enough, slowing down enough to just uh, listen to the Lord and to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord, to read the birth narrative of Jesus Christ, and to recognize and realize anew and afresh why we celebrate Christmas and so this evening, I want to just share on what are the miracles of Christmas, because there are many miracles. When you look at the birth narrative, you look at the Old Testament prophecies that prophesied the coming Messiah. I mean, there is one miracle after miracle after miracle that we see. But I want to look at just one of them this evening. And the one that I'd look, like to look at, the miracle, is, uh, is that is, is who Jesus came to. Who he came to, he came to ordinary people, just like me and just like you. And to me, that is a, a massive, massive miracle. When Jesus Christ was born, uh, he didn't come to a select few. He didn't come to a privileged class. He didn't even come for religious people. But he came for the lowly shepherds. He came for people who may not have had any interest in religion at all. And the Bible says that when Jesus was born, that he wasn't born, if you'll read the narrative, he wasn't born in a palace, although he was God come in the flesh. He was the God of the universe. He wasn't even born in a nice hotel. He wasn't even born in a hospital. He was born in a barn slash cave. 
And today I think we can over sentimentalize the nativity scene, the manger scene. When I grew up uh, as a boy, we lived out in the country and we had animals, we had some cows, we had some horses. And I remember one of my responsibilities, one of my chores was to make sure that the horses got their, their oats. Uh, and so I would make sure to get their oats. I'd put it in the manger uh, or the feed box, which is what the manger was in Jesus' day. And, uh, and then the, the animals would eat right out of that. And, and really, that's what it was like when they say he was laid in a manger. I'm sure they did some things to kind of clean it up a little bit. But it was basically a trough, a box that animals uh, ate out of. And so Jesus, he, uh, he came for the ordinary. Uh, and, and, and it's interesting to me, too. I like this here. The first people, think about this here. The first people who got to visit Jesus and worship Jesus wasn't the religious people. Even though uh, Jerusalem wasn't that far, several miles away from Bethlehem. But yet even the scholars of Jesus' day, those who were looking for the Messiah, knowing where he would be birthed, there was no interest there. But the angels showed up to the shepherds and they said something great has taken place and uh, in Bethlehem. Go and find him who is to be born king of the Jews. And of course the uh, shepherds went and they searched for Jesus. And because they searched for him, they found him. And so those first people that got to worship and visit with Jesus weren't um, what we would call the, the upper crust of society. It wasn't religious leaders, wasn't royalty, wasn't political figures. They were the very first people were the shepherds who were invited to visit Jesus. And you know, I never really had a, a real firm grasp of exactly what those shepherds were. Um, but several years ago, Terry and I were privileged to visit Jerusalem. We went on a, a Holy Land tour. And it was an exciting time, but I'll never forget the one day that our tour bus was headed up the hill toward Jerusalem. And the tour guide said, before long, if you look to your left, you'll see a Bedouin community. The Bedouins are basically a, a, a class of people that are, uh, that are just way, way, way behind times. We might even look at them as, uh, in Jerusalem, as, as Amish people. No running water, no electricity at all. They were, they were shepherds. Um, they weren't the cleanest folk in the world as well. But there they were, kind of like an outcast of society. And what's interesting to me is that they were the first people that got to visit Jesus. They were the first ones who received the invitation. And so we see that, that God comes to us. He comes to us from the lowest of the low. But he also comes to us when we look at the wise men. The wise men who came from the east they would bring the Lord Jesus Christ gold, frankincense, and myrrh, things that, that cost a lot of money. So when we look at these folks who received the invitation to visit Jesus, the first, of course, the lowly shepherds, and then later on, in uh, several, several years later, the wise men come with gifts. And so we see this, this, uh, this spectrum of the poorest of the poor to the richest of the rich. The Lord comes to them, just like he comes to you and I, and he offers us hope, which is really what, what Christmas is all about. And so when we look at, at this miracle, we say, well, what's the miracle of that there? It's, the, it's that God meets us. God meets us where we are. Um, some folks will sometimes say, well, listen, you don't know where I've been, Pastor Sammy. You don't know the stuff that's in my life. You don't know my past. Uh, I could never be acceptable to Christ. And, uh, and yet you, could be, you couldn't be any more wrong than to believe that there Jesus came for you. 
He came for the shepherd. He came for the wise men. He came for you. He came for me. And the purpose, the reason why he came was to live amongst mankind so we could see what God is like. For he was God. If you want to know what God is like, then read the Gospels and watch Jesus, the way he responded, the way he reacted, who he hung out with, and how he conducted himself. You'll see a picture of God because he was God. But he came. He came for us. Uh, he came to live amongst us. But the main reason why he came was to die for you and to die for me. He gave his life on the cross, a sacrificial death on the cross. He rose three days later. And he offers to us this Christmas the greatest gift that's ever been offered. And that's the free gift of eternal life. The gift of the forgiveness of our sins. And if you've never done that, I want to encourage you to do that today. I almost would say, what are you waiting for? This gift has been offered to you. Take it. Receive it. So well, how do I do that? Pastor Sammy, well, it's not difficult. You just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need you. I place my faith in the cross that you died on and upon your resurrection from the dead. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I receive you. I really receive eternal life. I receive relationship with you this Christmas. And I'll tell you what, if you'll do that, your life will never be the same again. For those of you who are followers of Jesus, all oh, embrace the truth this Christmas season once again in recognizing and realizing the purpose of Christmas and why he came. He came for the shepherds, yes. He came for the wise men, yes. But he came for you and he came for me. And he invites us into relationship with him. The God of the universe he invites us into relationship with him. Listen, make sure you reflect on that tonight as you lay your head on your pillow. And remember the reason for the season. Jesus Christ came for you to offer you the greatest gift that's ever been offered to mankind. The gift of eternal life, forgiveness of sin. Lord, we thank you this evening for your many blessings to us. We thank you for Christmas and all that's wrapped up in Christmas. We thank you that you came for us individually. You came for the shepherds. You came for the wise men. You came for the rich. You came for the poor. You came for the in-between. And you offer us the gift of forgiveness for our sins, a clear conscience. And we thank you. We praise you. We worship you for that on this day. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with our dear friends this evening, for those in our congregation that are going through some very, very difficult times. We pray that your peace that passes all understanding would flood their souls. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we think of the Flores family, uh, Lord Lorraine losing her mother yesterday. I just pray you'd bring peace to their household, bring peace to Lorraine. And Lord, for those that are, that are battling this evening, oh God, would you reveal yourself anew and afresh to them. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. In the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. God bless you, everyone.